Greetings, this is Warrior King and the time has come for the lions and the lioness to tell their own story. This is the lion's voice. Give thanks and praise for the wonderful blessing that's been poured on me. Give thanks and praise. Jah use I an instrument to set the people free. Jah give all the powers to chant. Jah give all the powers to chant. Rastafari, the lion's voice. Figure. Your Majesty, what in your opinion are Ethiopia's greatest needs? We have already begun the program most essential for Ethiopia. That is to raise the standard of living of her people through education and better health. These would be the primary objectives. Her remaining needs will not be forgotten and will also be taken care of. Your Majesty has taken a personal interest and a personal hand in almost every phase of life in Ethiopia. But does Your Majesty not sometimes grow weary and perhaps feel that this is all too much work for one man? This is really not significant. One individual naturally cannot shoulder the responsibility of a whole nation. We have already told this to our ministers and government officials. Our main objective in the administration of the affairs of 22 million people is that all should cooperate and share responsibility. This has always been our program and will continue to be our program. Our wish is to serve our country as an Ethiopian. It is our conviction that the administration of a country should not depend on one person, but is rather the concern of all. Each, in his own way, must help his country. What has Your Majesty learned from the attempted coup d'etat? You can say that they have learned from us, those who attempted the coup d'etat. There is nothing that we have learned from them. If you examine their demands, you will find we have already started these reforms. We would have been delighted to learn something new from them. Does Your Majesty see Ethiopia emerging as a leader, or perhaps even the leader of Africa? Ethiopia does not have any intention of being the leader of Africa as such. It hopes to live harmoniously with all its African sister countries. How long did the American Confederation take to become united? I believe you even fought a war about it. Would Your Majesty care to say a few words in English? My English is very poor. The most critical issue that has held the world in recent times was the Cuba-U.S. conflict. The statesmanship and wisdom of Prime Minister Khrushchev has greatly held to ease the situation. We'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate let both President Kennedy and President Primer Khrushchev, as well as Secretary General Yutani. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. That's the people first choice. Lion voice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion voice, be the lion cops we sacrifice. Lion voice, got to show the people them the life. Lion voice. <laughs> Kush 
share the pride of Africa and the world all over. Our kings are from King David's root. Our mothers were the sweetest fruits. So don't forget your foundation. Never forget your roots. Ethiopia, the land where the gods and the goddess love to be. Today it's so painful to see. Where You're the pride of Africa and the world all over. Come on, come on. What's all this conflict about? Come on, come on. It's time we work things out. Greetings in that divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie the First. Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziro Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmach Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan African Happy Man. I'm a creative industry attorney, I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an actionist, and right now I am the host of The Lion's Voice. Welcome to The Lion Voice. And welcome to the Lion Voice Network. This is our flagship program, the Lion's Voice, where it all started every Saturday. We come to you with the Lion's Voice, and this is a very special episode on the eve of the Ethiopian New Year. So that means we're going to do something new this year. Last year, uh, we talked about the origin of the Etian New Year, the differences between the Gregorian and the Justinian calendar. We'll post that Sunday tomorrow uh, for the flash forward episode for those of the item who are new to the channel and have missed that episode. We'll post it tomorrow. Uh, but this, I want to I wanna try something new. We have so much great things to report for this year. Uh, we're moving into 2016. Uh, via the Ethiopian calendar so we're very excited and I wanted to do a state of the union type episode where we just look at the year in review uh, look at some of the achievements uh, we're gonna break it up into sections uh, and we're going to you know just uh, celebrate or elaborate with the lion pride and the lion pride on patreon if you're new to this channel if you want to become part of the lion pride if you subscribe you are part of the lion pride right there problem solved we are also making efforts we are doing a campaign currently uh to increase our patreon right now we only have three patrons and for those who are not familiar with patreon patreon is a platform that allows people who support the work that you do to contribute financially uh doing this work at the rate that we're doing it you know uploading two pieces of content pretty much every day uh, it comes with great sacrifice particularly um, because I and I are the, the, the editor the, the, the talent the everything in the video so we really appreciate love for the Lions pride you all have been giving us tremendous support in the comment section the comment section you know, I couldn't be more pleased. We used to get one or two comments every strong. The comments come in now every day across the platform. So we know that this uh, channel is making an impact in many people's lives across the globe. So we just ask, if possible, because we know it's Armageddon, we know it's hard time. But if possible, join us, the Lion Pride on Patreon. Help us to support the platform. We want to see a thousand uh, people in that platform by this state of the union address next year i want to be able to come forward next year on the ethiopian new year just to report um that we have made a successful victory uh, you may have heard uh the opening song typically i use my own music uh to do the opening this episode is special um i tell everyone my superpower is the network and this is no different we want to just thank uh, Warrior King, uh, you know, reggae artist who 
well known to everyone. Uh, his song Ethiopia has been an inspiration. We decided we were going to use that song. And, you know, we reason with the brethren and the brethren has sent us a New Year message and blessing uh, that we're going to play. Uh, so I want to just share that because as the channel grows, the network starts to reach out. The network is tapping in to let I and I know, listen, I'm watching. And even though we are now 1500 strong uh within that 1500 there are some powerful ones quietly watching because as i said the network is powerful uh we have not even tapped into one percent of the network so don't feel the way you see all the interviews and people are commenting why give thanks you know but this is just the beginning so before we go any further i want to just play a special New Year message from I and I brethren, uh, Warrior King. Warrior King, please come talk to the Lion Pride, Lion Pride and Patreon uh, blessing. Greetings in the name of his Imperial Majesty, Emperor Isla Selassie I, and his chosen Queen and our Royal Goddess, Empress Vizier Menin. This is Warrior King, and today we are praying for peace for our Ethiopian family on this New Year. It's now 2016 according to the Ethiopian calendar and it's time for all of us to live as one and work together to rise the African continent beyond even its ancient glory. Big up all the lions and the lionesses that are now telling their story. Maximum respect to Lion's Voice, the voice of Rastafari, the voice of the people. And do remember to like, subscribe and share so we can expand the movement. And I'm calling on our sons and daughters from the ends of the earth the great time is now for organization, centralization, and black international repatriation. And remember the time is now, the time has come for lions and lionesses to tell your own story. And remember, this is the lion's voice. Happy New Year, Rastafari, this is Warrior King. Ethiopia, a land where the gods and the goddess love to be. Today it's so painful to see. With this joy in our great unity, sons and daughters of Sheba, children of Abyssinia, go share the pride of Africa and the world all over. The time is now, Rastafari. This is the lion's voice. Be God. So, that was a clip from reggae artist warrior king he also supplying the soundtrack for this ethiopian new year episode so we're praying that the item of full joy the vibes again this is just the beginning i and i have to big up um elder horace fullwood who is uh one of the jegnas of of warrior king you know the first one of the first elders that really helped guide I and i bridge in warrior king upon him journey and one of the first elders to really give I feed forward on the book, read the book, loved the book, you know, and, and uh, Haile Selassie's Ethiopia and, you know, read it, you know, I think a couple of times and, you know, shared with I how he learned so much from reading the book. Um, I was reasoning with I and I Bridge and Warrior King and he showed I that the elder watches the Lion Voice Network um, without fail, you know, so quietly. So to know that these elders are supporting the platform it makes i my heart full so i have to big up um the elder and just say salute and give thanks to all of the elders and that's why i say even though we are 1500 strong plus um there are so many giants within rastafari within the pan-african community within the music industry that i have built relationships that quietly watch the platform um, and that's what I tell people. When you come on this platform, don't watch the number of people. Uh, it's the quality of people who are a part of the Lion Pride that gives I my heart joy. Yes, the mass will come. But in the meantime, again, we give thanks for those who have been supporting the Lion Pride. I purposely have not tapped into the artist contacts as of yet, but we have them. Um, so you'll see those coming in slowly over time on the channel. But, you know, one of the reasons we have not tapped the, the artist part, because remember, I'm a creative industry attorney. I am also one of the founders of the Jamaica Music Conference. I'm in that world. I'm a music executive. 
uh, via my work with the Jamaica Music Conference. However, uh, because Rastafari uh, to the world, to the you know, is, is branded primarily through reggae music. You know, we talk about the reggae mansion and, and reggae being you know one of the principal PR vehicles of the movement uh, for good or for bad. I have stayed away from tapping into those artists' connections, but you know, you see some of the opening drops. They are artists, uh, and a lot more. Of those will be coming, and they will. Uh, you know, again, we'll slowly bring them in over time, but there are so much more to Rastafari, and that's why you see I bring a lot of the professionals, the, the frontline workers who have been on the background. You saw the live with Raseku uh, Sankara Tafari, a legendary uh, book publisher. Uh, we just dropped that, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. So, yeah, so yeah, so you, you know, so um, a lot of us were there. And, and that is where even the, the, the um, I had come up with the idea before started to, to thinking about Rastafari Speaks. And it's there now I said to share the idea with um, with um, Miguel and others, right? Um, and that is from there, it started to germinate a little bit more. And then by the end of 1980 is when we decided to we, we, we launch Rastafari speak sometime around November 1980. We put out November for the coronation. Right after the coronation, we launched the Rastafari speak newspaper. I um, entitled it the Rasta Rastafari speaks. Mighty, uh, you can see Raseku Tafari. You know, we talked about the Grenada Revolution. We talked about his work um, as a as a Black Power activist. Um, frontline books, Rastafari Speaks. These are seminal works in the lion telling his own story. So even what I'm doing now is, you know, standing side by side with elders who have blazed the trails. Uh, we also interviewed Ras Miguel Lorne, Head Start Publishing, Rastafari Attorney, um, before I and I, you know, mighty legacy of work in the Eastern Caribbean, in Jamaica, all over. So, uh, that interview is coming up. So, I was born 1950. I was about 30. Okay. I was about 30. So, his, their mother came along with us and we went to the stadium to see his imperial majesty. So, it was very glorious for me. Glorious. Again, powerful uh, works that are taking place. Uh, you know, so we're just getting started here when we talk about uh, the Lion Voice Network. Uh, but again, this is a special episode. And before I jump into uh, the episode, and this is how we're going to break down the episode, we're going to talk about the state of the union or the state of the unity. Um, we're going we're gonna to start with the, the channel. We're going to give you some overviews, some highlights. Then we're going to talk about Rastafari movements. Uh, we're going to then go to Ethiopia and big up my Ethiopian followers. We have, you know, Ethiopia is now the second biggest territory uh, because of the Ethiopia content that I've been doing. The Ethiopian brethren and sisters have been jumping into the comments. We've been having a vigorous debate, not always agreeing, but very respectful. So I'm big up every Ethiopian, Danastelin, uh, in Deminish, in Demina. You know, uh, all of them think that we, we have a big up our Ethiopian Wandame um, uh, throughout uh, the world who have been tapping in. Uh, so we're going to talk about the state of Ethiopia a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the state of Africa. Uh, we're going to touch on some of the coup d'etat. I promise uh, when building this channel, you know, a part of the line, I'm a Pan-African. And so we're not just dealing with Rastafari. We want to start increasing the Pan-African content on the channel. So we'll talk a little bit about the state of Africa, all of the coup d'etat in Africa. I'm planning a, a, a panel discussion. We're going to talk about Africa. I'm going to bring some notable Pan-Africanists on the platform. I have big guests, big things um, planned um, because I also have connections not only in the Rastafari movement, but in the Pan-African movement, both here locally in DMV, Washington, D.C., Maryland, but also 
globally that we will be tapping into so we had a little technical difficulty we forward again um, again this is the state of the unity episode Ethiopian New Year Malcolm Adisamet Happy New Year to the family give thanks um, to everyone uh, for tuning in all of our new subscribers everyone who has tuned in so I want to start off by just giving an update on the Lion Voice Network uh, first of all if you were one of our Lion Pride and you were here from before we had a hundred subscriber please drop a comment I want to know who our original Lion Pride members are if you were here before a hundred subscriber just drop a comment let I and I know where the item are tuning in from where in the world uh, if you were one of that first 100 uh, we're over 1500 strong now uh, 1540 at the time of recording this video uh, and growing every day um, new people are joining the lion, lion pride as the sound goes out there um, so far, uh, we have we set the goal to monetize the channel. We were able to do that with the help of the Lion Pride, the Lion Pride on Patreon. And for those who are not familiar with YouTube, for to monetize on YouTube, you have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. And I can tell the item that the four thousand watch hours is much more difficult to achieve than the f a thousand subscribers so a lot of people can get a thousand subscribers a thousand people to support but to actually sit down and watch the content for four thousand hours is, is whole leap and we're uh, now nearing eight thousand watch hours total on the channel so we have to big up all of the lion pride around the world who sit down supporting the content so far we've made about $65 of income I told the item I was going to be very transparent until we make the first $100 $100 is the payment threshold um, because I've been encouraging others to start their YouTube channel so I don't want any of us to have any illusions about what it is to be a content creator on YouTube what it takes you know you think that once you monetize you know people see the commercials and think their ass is rich um, full of money no great sacrifice we've made about $65 so we haven't even reached the payment threshold we'll probably reach it um, this month or sometime early next month uh, to the powers because now that we've hit a certain growth um, things have started to accelerate um, so we give thanks uh, we've hit several channel first uh, and most of those channel first have been in the last 28 days we uh, hit more than 18,000 views in the last 28 days and uh, that's a channel first we have a big up we have more than 11,000 unique viewers in the last 28 days 11,000 um, souls and people who have been here for and one of the reasons I said uh, for the first 100 people because they will know that in the early episodes I used to say if I could speak to a room with a hundred people in the room I would feel like it's a good use of, of I and I time and we used to take about a, a whole strong you know which let me translate for the non Rastafari when we say a strong we mean a, a weak in Babylon but we're not weak we're strong um, so we don't use that language but we would take a whole strong uh, to get to a hundred views and when I got there I would feel so much gratitude right now we're we're hitting a hundred views typically within 24 hour span so that's the natural growth you keep at it the discipline we continue to uh, drop the content to, to feed the algorithm again now we're doing a hundred views on a video within a 24 hour span uh, we have several uh, a few videos that now have went over 2,000 views I think we have about four videos on the channel uh, the highest ranking uh, the highest viewed video on the channel was last Strong's episode on the negotiated solution for the Ethiopian crisis. What's the, the solution 
that is now our highest performing video on the channel so that shows you the upward trajectory of the channel um, that we have right now uh, we are uh, building um, because of the lion pride on patreon we added uh, microphones to clear up the audio um, if you listen to the early interviews you'll see we we're just using the phone audio um, now we have um, clean um, audio thanks to the lion pride on patreon so when you give up contribution and attribution it really makes a difference and just to be a hundred percent transparent you know this is a one-man operation you know I do get some strength from the Queen and we give thanks but for the most part it's I and I you know we have to record the videos edit the videos find the you know if we have extra footage or whatever we're doing the research all of that at the same time I was working full-time at the same time I was serving on several non-profit boards at the same time as running other businesses so it's a lot of work so your support uh you know putting that ten dollars a month um the cost of eating out maybe uh, a lunch uh you know once a month supporting ten dollars a month can do wonders so we're just asking the lion pride family consider um, if not, we know it's Armageddon, so we give thanks just the watching of the videos, the sharing, uh, and being a subscriber does so much. You don't have to support in the Patreon, but if you can, um, we have to circulate the Rastafari dollar, the Pan African dollar, the Black dollar. So please support Rastafari owned media, Rastafari owned um, sounds. Uh, but I say all of that to say the channel. Is growing it's it's doing wonderfully we have some power packed interviews um, that have already been recorded that will be rolling out and that's how I have to work you know any free time I have I, I, I book interviews so we have a lot that's already recorded that we're gonna be releasing uh, historic interview with Nana Faraika Burhan um, her book Africa on the move is, is on sale we're gonna be dropping that episode we interviewed Linton of I Never Knew TV, brother Linton, who has a massive platform on YouTube. He just, uh, you know, interviewed uh, Judge Joe Brown. He burning spear him of whole heap of interview. You know, uh, Umar Johnson, big interviews. on um, brother Linton, he's one of the um, Jegna. You know, even though he's younger than I, uh, on YouTube and uh, in the YouTube category, I have to study what he's doing you know and i can call him and he's very free with the information so we have an interview with the founder ceo of i never knew tv check out his platform uh we have ras miguel lorne uh we have uh danny dread uh coming up we have so much um big interviews to drop really more that have been booked and that are in the works that we'll announce once um everything is finalized uh, but we are very excited about the platform. So if you have not subscribed, if you're a part of that 11,000 that has watched but has not subscribed, please uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button because we are not going to stop. We're just getting started. Uh, we have big things planned. So now we want to talk about Rastafari, the state of the Rastafari unity. Um, for those who are watching this live, I want to let them know that tomorrow we have the very first anniversary development of Rastafari book fest I will be featured as a featured author we're bringing together Rastafari authors from all over uh, the diaspora and in Jamaica to talk about their books and to talk about uh, publishing we're bringing uh, Ras Seku who we interviewed to talk about his publishing so make sure you don't miss that um, I am one of the founders of the Anniversary Development of Rastafari. We will be celebrating our 20-year anniversary next year. Um, and, you know, this is something that fills my heart with joy. The Anniversary Development of Rastafari uh, has been one of the pillars in the diaspora uh, Rastafari immunity. And it's very... Um, Powerful in terms of the work that has done over the 20-year span from events at Howard University 
from an elders medical project in Ethiopia. Uh, we helped with the building of the daughter's quarters um, before that was destroyed in Shashamani. Uh, you know, we, we fought a battle with the IRS to allow us to send funds as a nonprofit to Shashamani, uh, even though there is no registered entity that we were working with uh, to support the Bingyals. Uh, and we were granted that permission. We uh, started a, a study group, which goes on to this day. I had two uh, Lion Pride members who reached out uh, to become part of the study group. And at that study group, we basically are reading uh, from the speeches of His Majesty. The study group is actually happens at the same time that this is airing. So if you're watching this live, the study group is happening right now. Uh, but it's every other strong. Um, the anniversary of development of Rastafari study group, powerful, powerful um, platform. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, send an email to Ask Lion Voice, and I'll put up the, the email on the screen, uh, and we can uh, send that information how you can be a part of the anniversary of development of Rastafari study group. IDOR also started the IDOR teleconference initiative that sparked you know we have many uh, rastafari groups now that meet on zoom and meet uh, back in those days we were meeting on the the conference line uh idor was the pioneer in that you know the the tron group theocracy rain out of the naya bingi dark you know so many um groups sprung out of that idor teleconference initiative um so idor has been a pioneer in so many areas uh, for the Rastafari family. We'll also be bringing forward a repatriation summit uh, to help the Rastafari community coordinate a plan for repatriation, anniversary development of Rastafari, I adore, um, you know, strong fiscally as well. We give thanks, Brother John as the president, Mama Pauline as the treasurer, uh, Mama Walete, Dr. Walete, who you have seen on this platform a couple of times as our chair. Uh, I'm going to be bringing them on to talk specifically about IDOR and, and the works in the coming time. So again, if you want to know more about the positive works that are happening in Rastafari, like and subscribe uh, and lock in with us because we are here to highlight positive aspects of Rastafari. Uh, during COVID, I was also inspired to start a new organization, the Association of Rastafari Creatives, ARC. And ARC has grown. You know, um, we have monthly member meetings for ARC and a lot of initiatives that we are, are planning. Uh, we are, you know, we started as just a, a general collective. You know, over the time, uh, we had a large, uh, a board of ones that were helping and now we decided we streamline uh, and ARC is functioning as a trade association of Rastafari creatives. Uh, we just recently started the ARC filmmaker incubator um, and you know great things are happening there. We'll announce things we're negotiating right now with a gov African government. So we'll be talking about the great things that are happening as they as they concretize with ARC, we have the Agriculture Committee. We have prepared a business plan to implement a pepper project in Jamaica. Uh, ARC has been helping with the, uh, or leading, I would, I would say, the organization of an ITAL certification standard, bringing together Rastafari from across the spectrum, professionals uh, to help us implement an ITAL standard, uh, you know, a standardized what is ITAL, uh, for food production, for food growing, for you know across the across the board, that's something similar to the kosher standard of the uh, the European Jews or the halal standard of the Muslim um, faith. So Rastafari, we have our own strict requirements that make up ITAL. So we want to make sure that you know we can create products and services that are branded ITAL. Um, and that we know and we can be confident, um, particularly relating to ganja and other things, that this is ital and not this chemical or, you know, uh, you know, prepared with blood or 
meat or, or these things. I felt completely plant-based inputs. Um, all of that is coming down the line. We also, um, as ARC, um, are proud to announce that we are a founding member of the Rastafari Mansions and Organization, which is an all mansion initiative that um, has launched in Jamaica officially. Um, so that is a major achievement. The creatives will be represented at the table of the Rastafari family via ARC. Um, so we're going to be doing some membership drives and some more things in Jamaica. We'll keep ones posted um, here. So stay tuned again and, and, and we'll interview some of the ARC family here on the Lion Voice Network. So this is why I say it's so crucial for ones to, to stay in tune with what is happening um, by being part of the Lion Pride and, and locking in with us here at the Lion Voice Network. I have also been a part of the Haile Selassie Foundation for Law and Society, um, and we have been acting myself along with Attorney Marcus Goff as legal counsel um, consulting uh, the RMO, um, you know, as a legal, um, in our capacity as, as Rastafari attorneys. Um, so that has been some very satisfying work we helped to draft the, the RMO constitution. That was, again, enough, another great work that I am so proud to participate in and to be a part of history, you know. And everything I do, to be honest right now, I really try to look at it from a historical lens. What is going to be the historical impact of this move? And I'm happy to say that we are, you know, uh, part of, a, a lot of positive moments in history. If it's not positive, you're not going to see I and I as part of it. If it's mixed up, that is not I and I lane. You have people who they love it, they born for that. Not I. Uh, we are about the development. Um, I literally was blessed to put the, the, the development in the universal development of Rastafari. Meaning, um, you know, we were looking at different different names, and I suggested. Development, you know, we had Universal House of Rastafari, which was, you know, we look at the acronym and we say, I, who are, no, that can't work. Um, and I recommended development and it was accepted by the collective. So that has been part of I and I mission uh, from early days. And that was, you know, fresh out of law school um, when IDOR was formed in 2004. Um, so that thinking about the development building of institutions um, is one of the things that I have learned from studying Kadamawi Haile Selassie and that I really firmly believe that is I and I, I wouldn't even say believe, that I firmly know is I and I duty and I and I mission as a generation of them that seek his face. So those are just some things in terms of the Rastafari um, updates in terms of the state of the unity. Um, because you can't have a union without unity. So we want to talk about the state of the unity and the unity is building and it's coming together. Now, let's talk about Ethiopia. Um, some of the biggest performing videos on the channel have been concerning, all of the biggest performing videos on the channel have been in reference to Ethiopia, whether it be uh, our video on the coronation of His Imperial Majesty, uh, or the videos on the current uprising, Ethiopia content has been high performing. Uh, our video on Emperor Tiedros, also another consistent performing video. And uh, we have a lot of Ethiopians who have recently joined the channel. I just want to say the Nastilin to my Wandami, my Ihati, all of my Ethiopia family. Um, I am a strong supporter of Ethiopia, of a united Ethiopia. So although me love I and I Fano brothers and sisters, they are my brothers. I also love my Aromo brothers and sisters, they are my brothers. My uh, Tigray brethren and sister, they are my brothers. My Eritrea brethren and sister, they are my brothers. My Goragi down to the Omo Valley. Um, all of them are my brethren and sister in the Afar, the Somali. All of these are a part of the Ethiopian tapestry. And all of them are important. All of them came together 
for the victory at Adawa and to, so to I, Adawa is the blueprint for African liberation and it was a unity that helped us to defeat um, the Italians and their modern army um, at Adawa. So I couldn't advocate for anything. I'm not going to advocate a losing strategy, which the ethnic constitution that divides Ethiopia, we could never support that type of policy. And I'm not saying that we don't support uh, education on the different cultures within Ethiopia. I think that's crucial because you, you, unity doesn't mean uniformity. And we want to have that diversity of thought. We want to know about the Aroma Gada system and the Tigray history and all of the different textures. That's what creates the richness. But to divide governance along ethnic lines is, is a powder keg and has to be dissuaded. And it's also against um, the directives of his imperial majesty that said Ethiopia must be as one, you know. So um, that's where we stand on the Ethiopia situation. It's calmed down a little bit. The final fighters have dispersed, but there's been massive arrests, um, crackdowns. There were drone strikes, um, a lot of violence, uh, destruction. And again, I asked my Ethiopia family, there has to be uh, a solution and that solution is only going to be at the negotiating table and uh, there is no military solution for the ethnic division in Ethiopia it has to be at the negotiating table I continue to emphasize Haile Selassie made a militant stand for peace um, in the face of the dirt he could have crushed the dirt like a grape and I tell you um, the item that and, and if you talk to those who study Ethiopia they will know that um, it was not all of the military that was loyal to the Derg. Um, he could have plunged Ethiopia into a civil war very easily. He chose not to do that, which caused, you know, observers to say that Haile Selassie was senile because he refused. He reported to the negotiating table every day with the Derg, lowered himself um, to these children that he literally brought up, that he literally, you know, provided with education and visited them in kindergarten and now they grew up and a chai fight his majesty and he sat with them and listened to them and because he set the blueprint that the future for Africa must be at the negotiating table no matter how much pain no matter how much sorrow um, the only way forward is at the negotiating table um, I wanted to just play a clip of his Imperial Majesty um, on this New Year's so that we can see you know what he you know his thoughts and uh... your majesty what in your opinion are Ethiopia's greatest needs <laughs> We have already begun the program most essential for Ethiopia. That is to raise the standard of living of her people through education and better health. These would be the primary objectives. Her remaining needs will not be forgotten and will also be taken care of. Your Majesty has taken a personal interest and a personal hand in almost every phase of life in Ethiopia. But does Your Majesty not sometimes grow weary and perhaps feel that this is all too much work for one man? This is really not significant. One individual naturally cannot shoulder the responsibility of a whole nation. We have already told this to our ministers and government officials. Our main objective in the administration of the affairs of 22 million people is that all should cooperate and share responsibility. This has always been our program and will continue to be our program. Our wish is to serve our country as an Ethiopian. It is our conviction that the administration of a country should not depend on one person, but is rather the concern of all. Each in his own way must help his country. What has your majesty learned from the attempted coup d'etat? You can say that they have learned from us, those who attempted the coup d'etat. There is nothing that we have learned from them. If you examine their demands, you will find we have already started these reforms. We would have been delighted to learn something new from them.
Does your majesty see Ethiopia emerging as a leader or perhaps even the leader of Africa? Ethiopia does not have any intention of being the leader of Africa as such. It hopes to live harmoniously with all its African sister countries. How long did the American Confederation take to become united? I believe you even fought a war about it. Would your majesty care to say a few words in English? My English is very poor. The most critical issue that has held the world in recent times was the Cuba-U.S. conflict. The statesmanship and wisdom of Prime Minister Khrushchev has greatly held to his the situation. We'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate let both President Kennedy and President Primer Khrushchev as well as Secretary General Yutan. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. The reporter asked him about the coup d'etat and he said that if they had dug deeper they would have saw that the reforms they wanted have already started to be implemented. But again, you have a lot of people who deal in theory. Implementation is difficult, especially if you're being opposed um, on political reasons. And I always say to the detractors of His Majesty, what would have Ethiopia be like if His Majesty's reform were implemented without opposition? What type of place would Ethiopia be based on the achievements he made in the face of opposition, remembering that when he started the public education system, people were fighting him, the nobles were fighting him against even sending their youth to school, never wanting the, 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 the people of Ethiopia to be educated. His Haile Selassie elevated the people from peasants to citizens. His Haile Selassie, who, the first emperor who ruling with absolute power, granted a constitution, not because he was being lobbied by the people, but because he had a vision to elevate his people and to elevate their standard of living. Um, he gave his constitution, limiting his power. Also, uh, revised that constitution to give the people more power as the time went on. And in the 70s, there was another revision of the constitution being planned. So he's showing the principle that this is the unfolding. But the people became impatient, impatient and let people boots them up again and plunge them into war. And his militant stance was the recognition, and this is for all of Africa, that it has to stop somewhere. Somebody has to take the stand. Somebody, despite the atrocities, despite the, the, the pain and suffering that war brings, someone has to make that stand. Haile Selassie did that, therefore becoming peace on earth from the throne of King David. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, neither a lawgiver from between his feet until the coming of Shiloh, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh means peace on earth. So by establishing that peace on earth, the scepter now, we see there's no more scepter, there's no more throne. The throne became the hearts of the people. Rastafari now becomes the seat of that that, that legacy, that David throne now, that Lion of Judah flag now flies across the whole planet. It has become a spiritual flag, no longer a political flag. So some people, you know, have been commenting because I put the, the Lion of Judah flag on all of the thumbnails, that if I fly that in Ethiopia, they would slaughter and this and that about the flag. But the flag, it cannot be stopped now. It's, it's gone beyond a political flag. It's in the hearts. Of, of mankind and this is the legacy of his imperial majesty and that is the message I share with my Ethiopian brothers across the spectrum study his majesty when Ethiopia was having 9% growth under the Tigray regime the Tigray regime was implementing the development plan of his imperial majesty the renaissance dam all of these things were planned from his majesty time so you know what I mean we have to be critical 
uh, in, in how we look at these things and know that there are forces that are seeking to divide and rule us. So we have to be aggressive and I don't minimize the atrocities um, of either side. You know, war is ugly and war comes with atrocities. That's why it named war. I don't know any peaceful war. But we have to make that stand and the people have to pressure the elites who benefit from war or who war doesn't directly impact. The, the, the people have to aggressively. So if you love Fano, implore the leadership um, to aggressively pursue negotiation. You love Tigray, aggressively um, you know, get a uh, negotiation. You love Aromo, get the OLF, pursue negotiation. Um, war is not going to solve any of these internal issues in Ethiopia. Again, Haile Selassie, I set the blueprint of negotiation and education as the keys to liberation. Um, so that is the state of Ethiopia. Um, you know, it's not, uh, the, the, the violence has ceased for, for now, but it's fomenting. So it's very precarious. So within this time, uh, those of us who love Ethiopia have to advocate for negotiation. Now, let's talk about the state of the unity in Africa. We just saw a coup d'etat in Gabon. We saw coup d'etat in Niger. We see coup d'etat in Burkina Faso. And there was a coup d'etat in Chad. There was a coup d'etat in Mali. There was a coup d'etat in the Central African Republic. Uh, coup d'etats are everywhere. Most of them in French Africa. Um, the people are waking up uh, that France uh, has created a neo-colonial regime and they're not benefiting and there are new players on the ground in the form of China, in the form of Russia and Russia, you know, through its the, the Wagner group, you know, this is a mercenary fighting force that's been all over Africa fighting against the Western interests. We also have the rise of BRICS, um, Ethiopia now being admitted to BRICS along with South Africa. Um, so you have two African nations um, that are a part of the BRICS um, conglomerate. Saudi Arabia now is also a part of um, the BRICS as well. So you have BRICS growing in strength. Um, and, and it must be noted that Ethiopia being admitted into BRICS is, again, is based on the legacy of Haile Selassie I, based on it being the seed of the African Union. All of these things is what helped uh, Ethiopia into BRICS. So again, the legacy of Haile Selassie looms over all of these um, people trying to divide. They cannot divide Ethiopia in part because of the institutions have knitted Ethiopia together so uh, intricately that it's very difficult for the detractors to, to split Ethiopia apart. But Africa is on the rise, but we can't be naive that these coup d'etats mean that everything is going to be good. We see Coup d'etat does not necessarily mean it's for the people. So we have to continue to pump in the information, uh, advocate for education, and as a global Pan-African family, encourage our brothers and sisters. Again, self-reliance, you know, independence. Let's return to the soil. Let's plant our own food. Let's build our own industry. Let's circulate the African dollar, circulate the black dollar. And, and rise up this great continent because the tide that's sweeping Africa cannot be stayed. No force on earth is great enough to halt or reverse the trend. Its march is as relentless and inexorable as the passage of time. These are the words of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor the Selassie the First, Kadamari. So we're watching that unfolding. Uh, and I'm going to have some panel discussions. We're going to be bringing some preeminent Pan-Africanists to the platform to talk about the rising of Africa. I'm going to be tapping into people who have much more knowledge than I on, on some of these events that are taking place on Africa. So again, if you're a Pan-African, uh, we're going to uh, make sure you have content here. I am a Pan-African. Yes, I'm Rastafari, but I'm a Pan-African Rastafari. Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. That is part of our mantra as Rastafari. So stay tuned. You're going to see all of that on this channel. No. Let us talk about moving forward, the goals moving forward for the channel. We want to get this channel to 10,000 subscribers by January 1st, by the Babylonian New Year. We want to get 
a thousand uh, people in the Patreon by September 11th of next year. So by 2017 on the Ethiopian calendar, we want to make sure we have a um, thousand people in that Patreon. We want to also um, continue uh, building on our property in Ghana. We want to bring that footage um, to the family. Uh, so we should be making some traditions uh, next year to the continent. Uh, so please, uh, again, subscribe and share so you can see that. Uh, we're going to continue to develop ARC, IDOR, Haile Selassie Foundation. Um, the item have seen the work with Habisha that we are doing with the Kazi project. We have huge things planned for Kazi. Um, big up Bingishan. We have a exclusive interview that we're going to be dropping uh, from when we went to Organic Fest. Um, also, uh, when we went to the Habisha retreat, uh, we've planned the next five years for Habisha. So massive things coming with the Habisha, uh, which is a Pan-African organization. So I don't just talk about I'm a Pan-African and then we go lie down in my bed or I just read two books. We're active on the battlefield, you know, both in Rastafari and Pan-African. And we can show credentials um, in terms of work and how we have levocated our time over the years um, to these aims and objectives. Kazi is a proof of concept of building an alternative to Babylon. Uh, and we have that coming. So all of that content will be coming to the platform. Um, the RMO um, is getting ready to roll out its economic development plan. I and I have been a part of that process as well. We'll share that on the platform in due season as well. So just to put everything short to wrap up because we, 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 we've gone over a lot of time is the state of the unity is strong state of the unity is growing state of the unity is united we stand divided we fall i want to just thank once more all of the lion pride lion pride on patreon i cannot say how much your comments your messages your emails um strengthen i and i I have to big up our sponsors, Ramia King Design, CMOS, Life. Um, make sure you support the book, Haile Selassie's Ethiopia. We have the merch. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more visuals with the merch. We did some fashion shows that we're going to be unleashing. Um, had models, all of them thing there. So we are bubbling over here um, as we seal up this year and go into the new year. We are very confident in the victory of good over evil. We are confident that we are building a movement that will impact the course positively of Rastafari and of history. We are on our way to becoming the number one Rastafari multimedia organization. So if you think about Walt Disney Company, film, production, all of these things, that's where we want to take the lion voice network we want to create animated films we want to create feature films we want to create all kind of uh programs news program you name it we want to have it under the umbrella of the lion voice network we're starting here in i and i gates as a vision we started with less than a hundred subscribers so that's why i said drop your name in the comments we're growing we're not going to stop family with your strength we will manifest these thoughts uh, and the question always comes up as to you know all of this work you're putting in you're working in the law full time you have a family you're doing business you're on non-profit boards how do you find the time the chance much to do all of this you're an artist the artist side vex too you know car and now put no time i'm actually getting ready to launch the artist ig page um, September 11th, we're going to launch the artist IG page. Um, so this new year, the artists will get some focus. We've been uploading exclusive music into the Patreon. But people are asking, you're doing all of these things. How do you find the energy? How do you find the will to do all of these things? And you know what the answer is, my family? You know what the answer is that I tell them? I tell them that because the time has come for the lions to tell our own story. And this is 
the lion's voice. Ethiopia. The pride of Africa and the world all over. Our kings are from King David's root. Our mothers were the sweetest fruits. So don't forget your foundation. Never forget your roots. Ethiopia, the land where the gods and the goddess love to be. Today it's so painful to see where this. You're the pride of Africa and the world all over. Come on, come on. What's all this conflict about? Come on, come on. It's time we work things out. The Solomon dynasty will be restored as long as. Shall shine over you.